What time is it? I don't know about you, but I feel like I have more and more in my calendar every day. I check my watch many times throughout the day to see what time it is. It's pretty amazing to think that most people have these personal timekeeping technologies, like watches or phones, that can instantly tell them what time it is. It's hard to imagine what we'd do without them. That makes me wonder, who creates these timekeeping technologies in the first place? To investigate further, I visited the Electric Time Clock Factory in Medfield, Massachusetts, where I met Walter and Tyler. They're engineers, and they design clocks and other types of timekeeping devices that can be found in public places all around the world. Walter and Tyler are mechanical engineers. That means they use what they know about how the parts of machines move, along with their creativity, to create technologies that solve problems for us. They design clocks and timers that provide us with accurate measurements of time. Well, we use clocks to measure time because everybody sees time a little differently. You might think one minute is longer than my minute. Now it's really become the backbone of society in general. I mean, nothing can really happen without a definitive time schedule, work days, school days, sports practices, everything really operates off time. Today, we take for granted the fact that timekeeping devices like clocks and timers are everywhere. It's hard to imagine a world without them. It's become a lot easier today with uh, wristwatches and clocks on your phone and in your car and uh, the clocks that we make on the walls. Uh, everybody has a lot easier access to time. But it hasn't always been this way. Engineers have been working for centuries to create technologies that help us track time. For people thousands of years ago, the passage of time was tied to the natural cycles of the world around them. Things like the sun, the moon, and the stars moving across the sky, or seasons changing. Eventually, we realized that we could use technology to keep track of smaller increments of time. Ancient engineers designed timekeeping technologies that harnessed regular motions, things that could be controlled and observed here on Earth. They found these patterns of motion in simple things, like a swinging rope or a trickle of water. Timekeeping technologies like these might be ancient, but we can still learn from them today. So, I talked with my friend Messiah at the Museum of Science in Boston. So, what is this? Is this a timekeeping device? Yes, it is. It's a recreation of an ancient technology called the water clock. It's an early example of a timekeeping device. Now, it looks like a plastic container with a hole punched in the bottom. <laughs> it is, but in ancient times it was made out of clay, but today we're going to use a plastic container. So how did they use this technology back then? Well, lawyers in the court of Athens had a problem. They needed to limit the length of time each side of a trial had to make their case. Otherwise, one side would be free to talk for as long as they wanted to, and that wouldn't be very fair. Engineers had a solution. They noticed that by placing a small hole at the bottom of a clay pot and by filling the pot with a set amount of water, they could control the amount of time it took to drain completely. When the pot was empty, the lawyer's time had literally run out. Soon water clocks became a normal part of the court proceedings, and just like that, people were using a timekeeping device to measure the passage of time. So can we try it out? Absolutely. I've run this test before, so we can expect that it'll take about two minutes for the water to drain. Two minutes is not a lot of time to make an argument in court. That's true, but lawyers could make a bigger pot to hold more water or make a different size hole to affect the time that it will take to drain. I see. So, should we give it a shot? Of course. Two minutes. Exactly. Yeah, and with the same amount of water, it will take the same amount of time to drain every time. That's amazing. <laughs> so are there any other examples of timekeeping technologies designed by ancient engineers? Yeah, come on, I'll show you. So this is a giant timekeeping device. <laughs> yes, it's hooked up from a point above. It's called a pendulum. How have engineers used pendulums to measure time? The swings of the pendulum occur at regular intervals. So just like the regular intervals in water clocks, pendulums are very good at keeping track of time. So is that why sometimes you see a pendulum hooked up to a clock? Exactly. In a lot of clocks, engineers control the length of the rods so that each swing lasts for one second. This pendulum has a much longer swing, but the motion can still be used to track time. 
Back at electric time, I was excited to see how Walter and Tyler were applying these ideas to their own designs. The pendulum is a great example of an ancient timekeeping technology that is still used in clocks today. Well, this is what we have is a mechanical movement here, and this is typically what you would find in like a clock tower in a center of town. It's basically driven by gravity. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a constant. So constant. every time the pendulum moves over, the so, little notch is clicking by right, in that yep, gear. Yep. Oftentimes, clients will come to Walter and Tyler with a request to build a timekeeping device for a specific purpose. Whenever they begin a new project, they use a tool called the engineering design process, which is a series of steps engineers use to solve problems. First, they identify the problem that needs to be solved. People need a way to measure the passage of time. Then, they investigate by learning about what others have done in the past. It's then up to them to use the imagine step to come up with all kinds of creative solutions to design a timekeeping device that meets the client's specific criteria and constraints. We kind of identify the, what the customer wants. Mm -hmm. uh, then we kind of do a, I don't, a kind of brainstorming of how we can go about providing the customer what they're looking for. And that's really the fun part of the job is when, uh, is when someone comes to us with a, a challenge or a design that we've never done before and we have to approach that with an open mind and uh, when it's something we've never done we're starting from scratch and uh, really the world is your oyster at that point. You can, you can go anywhere with it. Walter and Tyler imagined all of the different ways that they could engineer a clock that worked well in a barber shop. They needed to find a way to keep a barber with his hands full apprised of the time. A lot of barbers use the clocks. They put it behind them so they view off a mirror. So the time would have to run backwards. So we have to put the numbers to run backwards, the hands would run backwards. Uh, everything would have to run backwards in order to keep the accurate amount of time. After the engineers imagined solutions, they put their ideas down on paper or onto a computer to create a plan. They share their plans with other engineers who use specialized tools to make their designs a reality. It's a real team effort. We all kind of work together on a project to make sure the lighting will fit in the housing and that uh, his dial will fit with my movement and everything will fit inside the uh, clock housing itself. And there's a, a lot of different people that have to work together to reach the final goal. The result of all their hard work is a design that can go on to testing. Tyler uses testing machines to push each design to its limits. So this is uh, our temperature chamber and it can go down to negative 50 degrees Celsius and uh, it gets pretty warm too. Um, right now we have a movement in there uh, and we're testing it for cold features. So while we put it in here, we look through the window and we make sure that the gears inside and uh, that none of the grease inside that freezes up and that the movement will operate under extremely cold temperatures. After they test, the engineers use the information they learn to improve their designs. Uh, if they don't pass the test, then we have to go back to the drawing board and either introduce a new grease to some of the gear trains or uh, redesign it with some larger teeth that uh, will accommodate the freezing so it'll be able to push through it. Sometimes we'll put a stronger motor on it too and that'll usually solve the freezing problem as well. By following the engineering design process, the mechanical engineers at Electric Time have developed hundreds of different types of timekeeping devices for almost every type of criteria or constraint. Walter and Derek's work is truly a continuation of the engineering that was started thousands of years ago. It's clear that engineers are still working on the problem, and that's a good thing. Think about how important time is to you and what you do every day. How often do you find yourself picking a time to meet someone, or double-checking the clock to make sure you're not running late. It's up to a new generation of engineers to design better and more accurate ways to measure time in the future. Speaking of which, looks like I'm out of time. Gotta go.